Hi, and welcome back to Raymore Repair. This sweetheart is back, and it's pretty much died of boredom too, but it doesn't run well, and the clutch slips and grabs all the time. That's right, it slips and grabs all the time. So we're gonna dig down into the clutch, and we're probably gonna dig on down and look at our main seals in this thing, because the way this thing runs, I'm thinking there's a problem with the main seals. Sometimes it will smoke, and other times it runs super lean. With that said, we're gonna dig into it. This once again, I believe is a 1978 KD-175, or KD-175A for you Kawasaki aficionados. But let's dig this thing down. We are gonna take the top end off of it as well and get an idea of what's going on there. It has good compression, but there's something weird happening. Could be main seals. So the first thing we're gonna do is pull the side covers off of it and see what we got going on there. And on the way, we're gonna check this clutch out because the clutch lives right inside of here. And on this thing, considering this is a reed valve type engine and a carburetor sits on the side, we've got to pull the carburetor off. Then uh, we can pull the inner cover off to get down to the clutch. So here we go. All right, we're going to start by pulling off the flywheel cover so we can check the main bearing at least on this side before we start digging the other side off. And uh, under here is the clutch adjustment is under here. Obviously our counter shaft sprockets under here. We're going to pull a shifter off. Let's get going. There's a clutch push rod. We're gonna take it out of there and put it back into the engine case. The good news is it's fairly dry in here. It feels like there's some up and down slack and that's not good news. No, well, yep, there's a little bit in there. I'm not sure we have the right pulley to pull this off. And it looks like somebody's been here before us. Well, hell, it's a 78 model. Of course somebody's been here before us. Or somewhere right around the 78 model. Yeah, we're gonna need to uh, do some serious investigation into this engine. That'll get our brake pedal out of the way. There will be oil under this second cover, so we need to kind of be thinking about that. Thinking about that, I mean, we get an oil pan. Not exactly how I thought it'd come off, but it's off nonetheless. pin or a pin in there, pull the choke thing off with, set that aside, pop that up and off of there. Then when you get something to give it a little tappy tap tap to come off there. Make sure we got all the screws out, looks like we do. Oh goodness gracious. Yeah. That explains the strange running condition right there. This looks like premix oil. This thing does have an oil tank on it, and this is the oil pump back here. And the oil pump just goes nudd, 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 like so, and pumps oil to the carburetor. So our gas line here, and our oil line comes up here, and it goes down here to the the disc, the timing disc, the rotary disc, rotary valve, I guess I should say. That's hooked up right. 
but my gosh, something is leaking in here. Shooey. That explains why sometimes you got a whole bunch of blood, and other times you get a ring a ding a ding a ding a ding, where it's running real lean, or it had a bunch of oil in it. One of the two. All the time. Let's give this a light spritzing to kind of make this a little less messy. Not trying to refill my can, I think. Okie doke. Let's pull the carburetor off. Guess we ought to pop our fuel line off so we can uh, get it out of the way. Ooh, it smells old. Of course, why not? This thing is old. This guy took this home and never wrote it. And this is what we got now. Let's kick this over and see if our uh, rotor valve looks okay. And it does. I gotta change your battery. As soon as my hands get oily. There we go, that's way better. Right inside of there, is our rotary valve. And as I turn the kicker, you can see there's the back edge of it. I'm gonna come around and show that leading edge again as soon as I get across there. That's the leading edge of it. We're gonna pull this cover off, so probably easiest to pull our oil pump out. And I think I wanna leave this line on there because it looks like it's fairly petrified. I'll end up replacing that. Just loosen this banjo bolt up. Catch both washers. And we'll put that back in there. And we'll pop these out. I think we'll just go ahead and pop this banjo bolt as well. Of course it went new oil pan. Because why wouldn't it? Now she won't set her oil pump out. I'm not sure this line isn't just going to keep dripping or maybe we're just completely out of injector oil. If that's the case, that's definitely what was in there. Now that's the transmission oil running out now. caught on something back here. Looks like there's a dowel pin inside that one. There we go. Alrighty. Here's our Wonderful clutch. Just wish it worked wonderfully. There's a pressure plate. Has a push rod still on it. Stuck. 
really worn. There's a jutter spring. Yeah, those are pretty stinking worn. They're not super overheated. There's another jutter spring. Looks like there's a jutter spring between all of them. Don't ask me, man. I've never been inside one of these. But when I was riding this thing, this clutch would either stick where you couldn't stop or it would slip. And when it slipped, it would really slip. I am amazed those aren't discolored more than that because I wasn't being very nice to it when I was riding it. We definitely need a clutch. And if we're leaking, uh, I don't think we're going to have a mainsail issue because we saw all the oil in with the, uh, with the carburetor. That outer chamber is supposed to be sealed. Fresh air comes in here and mixes in with a, it goes in this chamber and then gets sucked in by the carburetor into the engine. That's how the intake works on this thing and it's a pretty weird system. Kind of cool, kind of weird at the same time. I got to tell you, we definitely need a clutch. And we definitely need to replace the lines going to the oil pump and away from it uh, to get rid of any oil leaks we got in here because that thing is just chock full of oil. Header bolts. Yeah, I think she's ready to fall off now. There we go. It's heavy duty, man. Okay. Copper gasket. Ooh. Yeah, we got some problems. Let me get the cylinder off here and I'll show you. She wants to be stuck down. Now she's not stuck down. Alrighty. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. Let's get the light right directly behind you. There are some grooves in our cylinder there. So we're gonna have some matching grooves in our piston, I'm sure. Oh yeah, that baby is rough. Holy cow. Let me pop this off the rod. We got our snap ring out, now I'm gonna go around the other side and try to tap that piston pin out of there. Or gudgeon pin, depending on where you're from. It could probably be called either one. There we go. Whew. All righty, here's our piston pre-cleanup. And it's in pretty rough shape. There's yeah, some pretty big chunks right there. So we can get this ring off. There we go. Ring doesn't look too bad. It wants to bite in there. There we go. Doesn't look like there's a lot of pre-ignition or anything going on. But I'll tell you, that is one scratched up mamma jamma right there. Yep, gonna need one of those.
Now I didn't dig in this far the first time we worked on this, simply because the guy didn't want me to. But now then, there's a reason to, and that's the reason. Get to start the real joyous process of actually trying to figure out how to get parts for this thing, because they are few and far between. I'm gonna need a full set of clutches. I'm gonna need a couple of gaskets, because this gasket is obviously done. And uh, I'm gonna need at least a first over piston. I don't know if Wiseco has one of those or not. I'd be happy with a Wiseco. And our cylinder will have to be bored. So, yep. Yeah, you can see all that in there. See if we can get you in here to take a look at that a little better. Exhaust port's oily. Looks like it's oiling. I'd imagine most of this damage was done quite some time ago and we just rode it through it because it still had some good compression, but uh, it was making a lot of noise. If you guys have worked on these old KD-175s and you've seen some issues with these before, please post down in the comments anything you've seen that I need to be looking for. Uh, it's very possible I'm completely ignorant of some of the stuff that goes on with these. I don't think so, but I could be. Uh, this is the only KD-175 I've ever worked on or old Kawasaki dirt bikes. My forte is more old Honda dirt bikes. All right, I'm gonna leave this one right here and uh, we'll, uh, when we get our parts, when and if we get our parts, uh, then we'll continue on with a separate video on putting this sweetheart back together. Hey, thanks for watching Raymore Repair. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Subscribe if you would. Didn't cost you anything. It really helps me out. And I'll see you on the next one. God bless.